guys, I wanted to film a video about something a little different than I normally would do. Um, but I recently went through some pretty uh, weird stuff with my car and I wanted to talk about it. Um, I have a 2010 Ford Focus that's running in the background. You may be able to hear it here. And um, it uh, died at a major intersection in Westland uh, the other day. Let's see. Let's see. When was it? I think it was last Tuesday. It's been about a week since it died. And uh, right before it died, it squealed like crazy. Um, and it didn't stop squealing until it died. <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> you know, my dad was actually, I work with my dad, so he was able to come and get me. Uh, we pushed the car to a Sam's Club parking lot, and uh, there we were able to determine um, through some, I guess, deductive reasoning and process of elimination that my AC compressor seized up. Um, I guess it's somewhat common for these cars and what you know something gets into the system debris dirt anything you know gets into the system there and it uh, really starts to have problems after that so I haven't had air conditioning in my car for well over a year um, and we did also determine that for some reason my AC compressor was on when it shouldn't have been um, I did have a small freon leak in this car uh, so I just kind of didn't do anything about it and I just never recharged the system uh, but for some reason again um, you know <laughs> it was on when it shouldn't have been on um, we did fiddle around with the low pressure switch and it does exactly the opposite of what you think it would um, so uh, but I wanted to talk to you guys about how we fixed it because we ran into a few problems when we were trying to fix this first and foremost you know the easiest way to uh, you know, just fix it would be to bypass it with a shorter belt. Yeah, you can't do that with these cars. The way that they're set up, where the water pump is located, where everything else is just located on, on the front end of the motor there, you can't bypass it. Um, there's no way to bypass it. And because of how it seized up, it got real hot and it, um, uh, for some reason, the clutch engaged. Uh, and the pulley, you know, it, it was trying to turn the AC compressor and that's why it squealed and it stalled my motor out. So it, it just couldn't turn it anymore. Um, so, you know, the next step, okay, so shorter belt doesn't work, right? So the next step is to try to find an a, uh, a AC compressor bypass pulley. Uh, Dorman makes these bypass pulleys. Um, I've actually done an AC bypass on, uh, I had a 1994 Chevy Suburban K1500. It was a nice truck. Um, and, uh, I did the same thing on this thing. And unfortunately, Dorman does not make a bypass pulley for a 2010 Ford Focus. Why? I have no idea. It's just not something they make. Um, so we were kind of stuck. You know, how do we, how do we pull the AC compressor and bypass it without totally, like, I, I, this car is my daily driver. It's probably not worth any more than like 1500 bucks right now. It's got 220,000 miles plus on it. You know, I've had it for uh, six years now. Five years? Six years. Five. Yeah, five. <laughs> I had to think about it. I bought it in 2016. Um, you know, I put a lot of miles on this thing and, you know, it's it's been my daily for years. And so there's just a lot of miles. I don't want to put a whole lot of money into this car. It was not worth dropping a $550 AC compressor from the dealer on. It just wasn't worth it. Um, so after we determined that Dorman doesn't make a bypass fully for this, um, you know, we kind of dove head first into researching on how to do this. Um, so between me, my dad, and my boyfriend, we were able to determine that at some point in the car's relative heritage, um, you know, within the last couple model years that they did make a model with no AC. Um, in 2007, they stopped it in 2007. So once we were able to determine that, we kind of wanted to see you know, okay, was that the 1.8 liter or was that the 2.0 liter? It was the 2.0 liter, which is what I have. Um, so we were able to kind of set it up like a 2007 with no AC, but there was a lot more research we had to do here. 
Um, so I will insert a video of the buy, or the new pulley in, but Way ended up getting a Gates Idler pulley. Um, I don't remember the part number right off the top of my head, and I couldn't find the box. Um, but I I will be able to find out, so I'll make sure I put the part number in the uh, description box there below. And then, um, it, you know, but it's an since it's an idler pulley, and there's no bracket to mount it up to where the AC compressor was, you know, where do we put it? <laughs> So it turns out there is a bolt hole in the casing right below the um, water pump. And that's where it goes. It is the weirdest thing to do here. Um, and like I said, I will uh, put a video of it running because we had the wheel off and now the wheel wells and shrouding and everything was still off. You can't really see it uh, now that everything is back on. Uh, but I will definitely try to... Um, you know, put a, a video maybe on top of this one right now or um, in a second here. But um, you put it there. It's a much smaller pulley. Um, so I think the the stock belt size, serpentine belt size is 87 and 7 eighths. Or at least that's what I had on it. And um, we had to move it to an 84 and a quarter. We were trying to figure it out via the internet and there's just nothing available on this kind of uh, uh, car for an AC delete. Um, and so I really wanted to film something like I have 200 miles on this whole new setup here. It's working. The car's running phenomenal. Um, you know, I don't think it's run this good in a while. Um, and, you know, thinking back, hindsight's always 2020, but it's probably been fighting that AC compressor for a while now. I'm talking probably a month or two. Um, so... You know, and because of the difficulty in finding this information, I wanted to film something here. Um, but I, I wanted to cut towards, um, you know, a shot of the motor. It is running good. I do have an oil leak. We're not really sure exactly where it's coming from yet. Um, so just forewarning, it is a little greasy in there. But you can see the idler pulley from the top end. Um, if you look closely enough, I'll try to do a flash here so you guys can see. All right, so hopefully you guys can hear me. Um, this motor does have almost 225,000 miles on it. Um, but I don't know if you can see way down there. Let's see if I can get it to see. It's underneath. It's that pulley way down there. So the car's hot. It's been, it's been running for a minute here. Uh, but it is working. All right, guys, and just to kind of conclude this, uh, for the AC delete on this car, um, or AC bypass, what we ended up doing is we got a Gates idler pulley. Again, I don't remember the part number right off the top of my head, but I'm sure I'll be able to find it. I'll put it in the description box. And we uh, used a shorter belt at 84 and one quarter. Uh, it was a little tight getting on the, the pulleys there. You'll probably need a friend to help you. Um, but... It was working for us. I have 200 miles on this new setup and it's going beautiful. Uh, if anything else kind of needs an update, I'll be sure to do that. Um, but so far, uh, this is working really, really well. And the reason I wanted to film this video is because, you know, we got bits and pieces of information from different, you know, automotive th uh, forums and threads and, you know, Reddit even. <laughs> um, and it just, nothing was in the right place. and. It was all kind of scattered around. It was really difficult to figure out. And um, so I wanted to put something from start to finish. This is how we did it and it's working. <laughs> so if you guys have any questions, I will do my best to answer them. I'm not a mechanic and I'm also not as mechanically inclined as I probably could be. Um, but I will do my best to try to answer them. Thanks guys.